There's so much to think about. That's why it's our job to make your life easier. literally changing lives and we're going to continue to change lives from now and into the future. Hi, I'm Stephen Marinaro, the Salon Guy, and today we are at the Takara Belmont New York City showroom. From New York to Los Angeles, from Paris to Tokyo, Takara Belmont is recognized as a leader in furnishings and equipment for the salon industry, the spas, and also barbershops. Let's go inside and talk to some of the executives on their take on the salon industry. Hey, Stephen. Welcome to uh, Takara Belmont's New York show. Uh, my name is Michael Visconti. I'm the regional manager for Takara Belmont in New York and Connecticut, and it's great having you here. Thanks so much, man. I have some really interesting questions I want to ask you about the salon industry and your input on what's been happening. So you have some place we can go and talk? We sure can. We have a beautiful showroom upstairs right on the second floor. Why don't we take a little hike up there? Awesome, man. Let's go. Come on. Well, Michael, these are very nice chairs. I like them very much. <laughs> Thank you. And I really appreciate you being here today at Takara in New York. It's great to have you here. Yeah, well, the showroom is really beautiful, and nice. uh, thanks for having me here. So I want to get down to business. I want to ask okay. you some really important questions and, and your input and your opinion on what's been happening in the salon industry. Mm -hmm. The salon industry, when, and what I think, has been taking somewhat of a hit, especially where I'm from in New Jersey. Salons are closing down. Uh, you know, people are, the business isn't up in, in mm -hmm. some cases. And what is your take on that whole thing and, and what you feel about that? Well, I feel the um, economic crisis um, of the last four years have really impacted all businesses and it's impacted the United States and it's impacted internationally. And of course the salon industry hasn't been immune to that. Um, I really in my territory, which is basically New York and Connecticut, haven't seen really a lot of salons actually closing, but I've seen many of them downsizing and just going to smaller spaces to save overhead, save rent, save utilities, and that kind of thing, as opposed to actually closing down. Okay, well. I see a lot of salons closing down, you know, and uh, it, it, it's something that scares me. And, and where that ties into you guys is, you know, is, is the way a salon looks, is that, do you think you're going to keep a salon open? I mean, with your designs, with what, your equipment, I mean, is that going to help a salon, you think? It's definitely going to help a salon. I mean, it's definitely going to help a salon, the aesthetic value of equipment, of the overall design of the salon, how inviting it is for uh, customers and clients to come in. That, as that old adage, that first impression is so important. So when they first walk in the salon, I mean, the salon has to be really striking. It has to blow you away. It's going to help in terms of their, their business. It's going to help in drawing your clients. It's going to help uh, staff out and, and, and just how the staff feel by going to, going to work every day. So that's very, very important. But the other thing that I've noticed, because I've been doing this for quite a long time, is I've noticed that salon owners today are a lot more business savvy. Um, they're more knowledgeable about business, about running their salon. I mean, they've always been very artistic and very creative. Uh, that's, you know, uh, that's, that's a godsend to them, and, and, and they're great at it. But earlier in my career, I noticed a lot of them didn't have a lot of business sense. It seems today they're unbelievable when it also comes to business and, and running a salon and managing a salon. Well, that's an interesting point, business, because not only are salons closing down, but there's new people, new owners. I'm seeing a lot mm -hmm. of new owners, new salons opening. So if, if somebody wants to buy a salon, right, mm -hmm. and they say, or, or open a salon, what's the first steps? To, do they reach out to you guys? I mean, what's the proper procedure for somebody who wants to open a salon? Well, there's not any really, like, uh, game plan to go by or a blueprint. But, of course, you have to find a good location. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I always think about is the old adage again, location, location, location. That's the most important thing. But the other thing you have to look at is make sure that your location doesn't, you know, your overhead in that particular location isn't over your head. I mean, if, if you're planning on opening up a salon with only, let's say, six operators or four to six operators, you don't need to go and get a 2,000 square foot location because, you know, just your, your rent and utilities and, and just outfitting the salon is going to really take a little bit out of, your, out of your pocketbook and out of your wallet. So the best thing is try to find a location that is a great spot, that has parking, uh, great views, and also is um, if you're, it's the size that you can manage. 
to start out. You could always expand and you could always grow into a larger location. So the best thing, the first thing I would do is of course you have to find a location. Make sure that location fits your needs, is basically is the first thing to do. And then once you find that location, or even before finding that location, and you're thinking about putting a salon in, you could always come to us, to Takara to Belmont. Um, we're expertise in, in salon design. Um, and it's not just the design aspect, we also help with business consultation. Um, that's one thing about, about Takara, um, when, you, when, you, when you really purchase from Takara, or you even just uh, get some ideas from, from Takara. We have the very experienced and uh, people that are, uh, are experts in their field that can really lend you assistance when you're just in the beginning, even if it's a dream that you're thinking about doing it, doing uh, opening up your own salon, but don't have a location yet, we can still assist you in that. So Michael, when a salon owner comes to you and says, mm -hmm. you know what, I'm ready, um, obviously they have to have some money in order, in order right. to, to right. put this whole thing together. Yeah. Uh, how do you factor that in and what's the procedure when it comes to financing for a salon? Well, what I do personally, uh, that's not one of the first things I ask them uh, in terms of what kind of money do they have. Because I really want, want them to get the whole experience of being with Takara and the staff of Takara. We have designers on staff that can help them with um, designing the shop and also with, with color and with what they have for a vision of what their salon wants to look at. If they have some particular style they, they want to go for, we could help them in that regard. Um, for example, I'm, we're working on some just uh, some large salons up uh, in Westchester. And right now the building's not even uh, built yet. But there's architects involved, and our designers are involved. And what we need to know is roughly how large a, a space they're going to be taking, um, what services they're, they're going to um, want in that space. Are they going to do here? plus color, plus are they going to have pedicures, are they going to have treatment rooms, um, a, a chemical processing area, of course they need a reception area. So we really get involved with the whole layout and design of the shop, which uh, in, in the same manner as they, whatever their needs might be and what type of services they, that they want to perform there. Once we get all that down and we get a list of the requirements and we get you know, some design aspect uh, worked up for them, then we'll start discussing, depending on the type of style of, of the equipment, style of the cabinets, uh, style of the front desk, uh, the styling chairs, the shampoo units. Then we'll start putting a budget together for them. And uh, if that, something that we put together might be a little bit over what they really wanted to spend. Uh, right now, Takara has such a line of equipment that, you know, initially Takara was noted for more maybe a moderate to high. But in the last two or three years, we really have come out with some really nice items that are, uh, I mean, the best quality you could ever get, and great quality, but also at a very reasonable price. Um, and the other thing is, if budget is the main factor, because a lot of times budget is the main factor, um, we can do just about anything when it comes to design and color and, and um, create a, a styling station or create a look for them. But, you know, the money is always the, when it comes down to it, the most important thing. Do they have the money to do this? Um, we have financing. We have leasing companies that we work with and that can provide their dream salon with the financing of the leasing company that we also have to offer them. As a big thing that's happening right now is I'm seeing not only salons closing down, I'm seeing new salons, but I don't know if you can agree with this, downsizing, yeah, right? Definitely downsizing. A, a big salon, you know, mm -hmm. the owner saying, you know what, I've got too much, there's I'm not making mm -hmm. enough money, um, you know, I have to cut back. So what happens when, it, when an owner wants to downsize from a large scale salon to something smaller? Can, can you still get involved in the design aspect in that? Angle? Oh, definitely. I mean, definitely. We could do uh, small salons, medium salons, and gigantic salons, you know. And, and you could still make a, a small salon or a smaller space look dynamic and, and look just absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. Um, and that's not, again, it's not really a, 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 a problem or, or, or situation that it's not difficult for Takara to do or the, the experts at Takara and the designers at Takara, um, that we can make a, a small salon look as inviting um, to clients and as, as beautiful to clients and staff and the owner as a large salon. What's your take, and I see this all the time, a beautiful looking salon 
but an owner who has no idea how to run run their business. That's, I mean, drive it right into the ground. What how does that make you guys feel when you come in there and make a beautiful place? And then, well, that's a, that's a, that's a that's a tough one because the one thing that I know personally what I how I feel, and I know it's also across the board w with Takara. Uh, we're not a company that just want to wants to sell a lot of equipment to a client or a customer. That's not what we're about. Um, we're about wanting that customer or client to be successful. Um, in order to be successful, you should definitely, like I said before, have some business knowledge. And we're seeing a lot of the salon owners today and the stylists today definitely, definitely having a lot more in tune into the business aspect of, of, of their salon, of watching their inventory, uh, of watching um, what their, their costs, of watching what their rent and utilities are. Um, and that is, again, if, if it's somebody that, that we can consult and we could talk to, and if they really want to put in, what I get a lot of times is that I get people that come in or clients that come in and they want to open a 10 or 12 or 20 station salon. And the first time I say, well, okay, you want to put 15 stations in. Um, the, how many people that you do know, you definitely know are going to be going with you. And if they tell me, well, it's myself and my sister and my, and my husband and one other person, and they want to put a 20 operator shop in and they know they only have four people that are going to be working there, I don't care if you work every day, 260 days a, a, a year, every hour, you're just not going to generate enough income to cover your overhead. Again, that's where we come in and say, listen, maybe, you know, you got a great concept. I, I, I love what you want to do, the services that you're going to uh, perform here. But why don't we start smaller? Why don't we start with a six operator shop? And something you, they could afford. And you've actually, have you ever seen that where the, when they go, you know what? And they come back to you and they go, because of your expertise, you actually may help me make the right decision by, yes. by keeping a smaller salon and yeah. following. That's yeah. great. Definitely, definitely. And that's, and again, that's why I think we get a lot of repeat business, repeat customers, because we're not there just to sell them a bunch of goods and, and equipment and make a gigantic sale. We're, we're here for them to be success in their business and what they, you know, probably wanted to do since they were a little kid and, and saved, you know, they might be working in a salon for five, six, ten years, saving all their tips so they can open up this, this, this the, the salon of their dreams. Um, at least I know I don't and Michelle doesn't and other people uh, in, the, in the company, our other sales staff, we don't want to just sell them a bunch of equipment. We want to make sure there's a success and their salon is a success. One last thing I want to ask you, Michael, is if you can say one thing to new owners, right, people that, that mm -hmm. say, you know what, my dream is to own a salon, what, how can Takara Belmont help that person who uh, wants to open up a new salon? If you can just sum it up, say, come to us and this is what we can do for you. Um, I would have to say um, the overall um, mission of the company or what the company stands for. Um, and it comes from the top. It comes from the, the leadership of the company. It, it, it comes from the founding fathers of the company. Um, we have, we're an international company. We have offices in, in, in Asia. We have offices in, in Europe. We have offices in Canada. We have offices in South America. We have offices, of course, here in the United States. Um, because of that, being an international global company, we, we could feed off so many different areas of the world in terms of layout, of, of, in terms of design and technology and, and cutting edge type of equipment. Um, so it's end quality. So basically, it's, I think it's the overall Takara concept of, of, of um, having excellent, probably the best quality equipment in the world, being an international global company that really helps us feed off of that and, and help our clients. Um, the leadership of the people of, of our support staff, customer service, our, our showrooms throughout the country. Um, so I think experience, um, expertise, quality, service, and integrity, and being honest and fair with, uh, and having respect for anybody we, we work with and deal with. That's great. Those are all very strong values that I believe in. And I think uh, I think what you're doing and what you share with me today is great. And thank you so much. Now, since we are in the showroom, 
Uh, I do want to take a little you know, peek around the showroom, <laughs> okay. and I want to I want to get some uh, stuff. And I'm That'd be great. I love it. Yeah, we're going to talk to Michelle. Uh, but Michael, thanks for your time, man. You're very welcome. Hey, I'm Stephen Aslongai. Hi, Stephen. I'm Michelle Coster from Takara Belmont, the New Jersey sales manager and uh, regional designer for Takara Belmont in New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Wow. Yeah. Sounds great. <laughs> great job. I love it. Yeah. Well, I had really a lot of fun talking to Michael, and he shared some really interesting things with me. And you're the design specialist, so I'm really excited to talk to you about what your take is on, on salon design. And you know, when Michael and I were talking, I mentioned to him, you know, I'm seeing salons closing down, I'm seeing all sorts of you know, new salons, you know, people downsizing, all sorts of interesting things. So first of all, I wanna, I wanna comment on what I'm seeing right here in front of us. I see a really cool, unique station. Um, talk to me about this station and, and you know, what is this exactly and, and who, whose salon would this fit for? Uh, actually, we created the station. It's a very versatile station. One of the things that I always shoot for is, is that everything in the salon needs to have a home. And so often when you walk into a salon, you'll see a roller cart sitting out in the open or, you know, they'll be stumbling over a hair dryer. So what I've tried to do is I've tried to create stations over the years that actually do minimize the clutter in the facility. So with this particular station, if you actually see it, the components actually then turn around and fit a roller cart that they can actually do perms. Oh, wow. Or they can actually do use their color bowl mm -hmm. um, on top of this unit to apply color. And then when they're done with it, they can actually put it back into its little compartment. Wow, it's got, and, and the quality of this is, is beautiful too. This. Uh, you know, it's, it's sturdy, it's... Yeah, it's like, very you know. sturdy. Um, Takar Belmont actually has our own uh, manufacturing facility in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, and uh, they do make sure that everything is engineered properly, properly and uh, everything has sturdiness to it. Now I like, now this is interesting too. I mean, first of all this, the way this is kind of designed, and this is a little bit higher, it's usually, it's, it's like it's all in one right here in front of you. You know, sometimes you see where you put the blow dryers in on the side of the station. Correct. I like the fact that everything's kind of, it's right here, you know? Right, exactly. And one of the things that we always try to do is we try to give our clients, again, the versatility of being able to create and recreate. So let's take, for example, you do have the blow dryers and iron holders on the top of this, but if they wanted to take these blow dryers and iron holders and move them to another location within the station, we can actually do that for the client. Okay. So on the topic of design, right, when, when an owner comes to you and says, I have to have blue walls or I have to have white walls, but I want this, you know, this station or I want this kind of uh, counter. I mean, like, and, and they come to you with something I have in mind. I mean, do you ever say to them, you know what, your idea, it, it's great, but it's not, I have a better suggestion for you that's going to work better for you. I mean, yeah, there have been times that I've actually had to do that where, you know, a client is stumbling a little bit with their, you know, putting everything together. So what I typically tell my client to do prior to them coming to me is do, the, do a little bit of homework and bring pictures of things that they actually love and enjoy to be around. So it gives, it gives me the comfortability of not knowing them to get to know them in a short period of time. So when we're sitting down, we usually, I'll, I'll tend to sketch out a drawing or you know a, t a typical station and then choose colors with them to meet their whole color scheme. And then it's a whole design process where um, they might you know want a cabinet as such, but then they might want a long mirror. So we'll incorporate and I'll redesign and re-specify for them so they can eventually or ultimately um, finalize their design take. Wow, that's really cool. I mean, that, that really is helpful to a lot of people. Now, now, speaking about color schemes and mirrors, I see you have a, a nice, beautiful white station, yes. uh, which attracted me right away. Um, I, love, I love white, mm -hmm. and, and I love the, the mirror, how it's kind of lit up over here. Um, tell us about this type of station and who this would be good for. This station is phenomenal, um, and everyone, everyone, a lot of people come in and they really do like the station to the right of the mirror, and they like the full length. It gives the um, the uh, salon a grandeur look. White is the new color, back in style. It was in years ago. Um, I'm going to say in the early '80s, and mm -hmm. now it's back um, in 2000. And 10 to 2000 and however long it's going to have its longevity. So it is a beautiful station. It works very well. A lot of people like the illumination in the mirror. And the reason why they like the illumination in the mirror is actually because when you're in a salon, you tend to, a lot of salons or a lot of designers over the years have always put lights over the head. Mm -hmm. 
what happens with that is that it actually casts shadows under the eyes and then they look like they have dark circles. And they hate that. And the, <laughs> the client thinks that they look horrible. They look horrible. I can't horrible. wait to get out of right. here. I'm so tired. I need to go home and take a nap. Uh -huh. <laughs> but what happens with the frontal illumination on a styling station or on the wall is, is that it actually rids the eyes of the dark circles and the clients look so much more pretty in the mirror. So they really do. So this is a great um, styling station for a client. And this is why I'm standing right here because I look better. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wow, why don't, no, the circles are gone. Yeah. <laughs> no, this is really, really cool. And now this, this looks like it's more of a traditional type, um, you know, uh, station and, you know, everything again is right here. Um, now when a stylist wants to put their blow dryer somewhere, their tools, where some have the countertop, you can put it right on top. Where, where would that go in this type of station? This particular station, the uh, blow dry iron holders are in this cabinet okay. down here. So typically what we do is when we do the floor plans, we um, require that the client either pulls a BX cable out from the wall and mounts a uh, quadruplex outlet on the back wall of the station, or you can actually cut the back of the station out and there could be a quadruplex on the wall. It depends on what, how the client wants to approach it. But um, this is where the blow dry iron holders would be. Okay. When, when somebody comes to you and says, uh, you know, is it, what's the biggest factor in the way you guys would design a salon? Is it, is it really the space? Could you make, you know, a two station salon look just as good as a 10 station salon? I mean, what, what's really one of the biggest factors? Um, is it money? When, when, when creating an, a, a design for a salon? I think that there's a design for every budget. Um, so whether they have $5,000 or they have $100,000 or $200,000, I do think that there's a, you know, you, can, you have the ability to create beauty in, simple, uh, in a simple manner. So um, we typically, you know, try to focus in on the client, what we're going to achieve for the client to give them the best look for their dollar. Um, and make them feel comfortable and be happy in the long run because that's, you know, as Mick said, we, we pride ourselves at Takara Belmont. It's almost like our little child or a little baby that we're like coddling that we want to make sure that they are ultimately happy in the long run. One thing that's really important besides these beautiful stations is what I think is the shampoo experience. And I want to talk to you about your take on some of the uh, shampoo bowls that you guys offer, okay? Absolutely. Right. Yeah, let's go. Like I said before, I think one of the most enjoyable parts of a client experience is the shampoo sink and, and, the steering, and the experience. And being in a comfortable chair definitely is important. So talk to me about uh, what you have here as far as your shampoo sinks. Uh, this is actually our Liberty uh, shampoo unit and it's uh, manufactured by Takara Belmont out of uh, Wichita, Kansas by Marble Products. Um, and we manufactured this um, because what we wanted to do is we wanted to give the customer the freedom to choose. And what we mean by that is they, they named it the Liberty, the freedom to choose. Um, this particular shampoo bowl happens to be brown and they have a brown chair and a black base. What you can do is if you wanted to, you could turn around and you could take this blue or 24 other colors and make different combinations. So what would happen is, is that say I wanted this to be a blue bowl instead of a brown bowl and I wanted to make the body brown hmm. instead of black. I could change those colors and then I could turn around and make the chair blue or I could make it purple if I wanted to. So it really is, it gives the client versatility in design and uh, they really get the chance and the opportunity to create for themselves. Well, I want, I want to sit in this chair and, and feel how comfortable it is <laughs> because uh, being in a comfortable shampoo chair is definitely important. <laughs> Absolutely, it sure is. Oh wow, it feels good. And it's interesting how the chair is attached to the sink because usually it's, they're separate, right? Typically what happens is, is that in the industry there are backwash units and we created this backwash unit to mimic many others that are out there. So this uh, sink is an all-inclusive backwash unit. There are, this particular bowl that you're sitting in can actually be hung on the wall without an all-inclusive unit and then you can actually slide a chair up to it. So, but the all-inclusive unit, obviously it's the shampoo bowl, it's the body and the chair. And then what happens is, is that you can actually tilt the bowl to accommodate a longer torso or a shorter torso. Okay. Well, the reason I'm sitting here is I'm waiting for you to wash my hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's move on to the, to the okay. next. Okay. Now, th now, this, I, I really like this design over here. Um, I think that uh, this is, I like this kind of look and feel. Like, this is an interesting type of chair. Um, and this, 
is something I'm seeing more and more in salons. Tell us about this one. Uh, this shampoo bowl is one of our newer shampoo bowls also, and it happens to be, um, again, an all-inclusive unit. It has a wider body. Um, it, this one has a foot rest on it, so when the client sits down, you can actually um, uh, um, bring up the foot rest for the client, and then also um, the bowl does adjust, um, just like it did in the uh, Liberty shampoo. This um, bowl happens to be made out of porcelain, so um, it will absolutely last forever. Now, this looks, I'm seeing more and more of these types of styles in salons, and I see ones that are still attached to the wall, and then the ones where the assistant can go behind them and shampoo from behind. So what's, what's your take on that? And, and is this one of those ones where someone goes behind it? This is a shampoo, with a, uh, shampoo bowl that uh, the client, I mean the operator does go behind. Okay. Um, but what happens is, is, is that we've also through design over the years, there are clients that come in and that do want an all-inclusive unit. So what we'll do is we'll actually adapt with our ingenuity and figure out how we can actually pull the plumbing from the wall and go through the back of the unit. So they can have it either way. They can shampoo from behind or they can shampoo from the side. That's awesome. I wanna, I wanna sit in this. Sure. I want to feel out this footrest over here uh, to see. Uh, so we just pull this lever. Yep, I'll pull the lever for you. Okay. Oh, very nice. Oh, I'll come back in about 20 minutes. Right? <laughs> I'm going to take a nap over here. <laughs> now this feels great. I love this. Feels great. And definitely because this is very comfortable, it, it's already making you feel more of an experience, which exactly. I think, which I think is very, very important. So. What, tell me about this this one here. This this is looks very interesting. <laughs> yeah, this is actually our Shiatsu unit, and it actually has um, a remote control. Wow! It raises and lowers the um, the footrest and the chair itself, and then it has um, rollers in the back of it to give you a massage. Well, so me, why don't you have a seat? Yeah. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna have a nice massage here. And, uh, so, so we'll put up the footrest. Okay. Now I know as it goes up, it's kind of like a slower pace, right? Yes. Okay. Obviously, this is clearly for something that somebody wants to be really relaxed in and take their, take their time. And a lot of salons now, I'm noticing they're doing more of a shampoo experience where they're taking 15, 20 minutes and offering a service. So something like this would be great. This would be fabulous for that. Um, and a lot of times in the salons now, they're also getting, they're given the head massages. Mm -hmm. And it just really relaxes the client with the shiatsu going up and down the, um, along your back. It makes it just that much more comfortable. Uh, and I can feel the massage going. This is, this is great. I like it. Now, you're probably thinking this is awkward because I've got no hair and I've sat in three shampoo bowls. <laughs> you know. But you can still need your scalp well, washed. You know what? People don't give me that kind of respect. I want that sort of treatment. So, all right. So, all right. Let's get, get me down here. And um, now, are you noticing more higher-end salons are going with, with something like this? Or is this, you know, would this be for, say, a two chair salon or like who would be getting something like this you know? I, you know what it all depends i mean everybody has a different budget that they work with so uh, you know as a two chair salon might come in and say i absolutely have to have the shiatsu because they want to create that experience for the client so again it depends on you know what they're looking for and you know how they're going to actually approach their infrastructure within their organization that's great yeah so before we before i leave i have a couple more questions for you okay? sure mm -hmm. so to wrap this whole, this whole uh, great topic of design and, and this experience I've had here with you guys, Michael said, you know, he explained the culture of your salon, of, of um, to care about the company. And it's all about integrity and, and service and, and the level that's really a high level, which I appreciate and I respect that too. So from a design standpoint, right, what do you say to somebody when they're looking for a new salon? I mean, from beyond like the financing and this and that, I mean, does, do you look at the person's, the owner's style, like the way they are themselves? You take all that into consideration and try to match something of what that person is? Yeah, I mean, typically, again, I usually tell people that before we meet and we get together, um, I tell them to bring in magazine um, pages that they've actually, you know, they, everybody gets a home and garden magazine or a design style magazine or, you know, some type of magazine that they look at that they really love. So they gravitate towards different styles and they they can even use some of the you know higher end uh, clothing designers or their store designs and so we kind of get a feel from them what they're looking for um, and what they feel comfortable in and then we gravitate and move you know towards an ultimate finished design for them yeah well i really want to thank you for your time today i had a blast with you it was thank nice you to so meet you. much it was so nice to meet and, you and yeah, it was really, fabulous thank, thank you, you. I, re I really hope that people get a lot out of this today because this is something i've never seen before i mean to talk to you guys the, the 
the innovators in the, in the industry for what you guys are doing. I think this hopefully is going to help out a lot of people, especially new owners, you know, people looking to, to open their first salon that they, it, they can afford it, you know, and they can have a beautiful looking salon and they can have you guys help them out. Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're here for them. So one last thing, where can people find out information about you guys on, on the web or? Well, yeah, we actually have a website that's Um, .com. um they, We have our uh, manufacturing facility in Somerset, New Jersey that we ship all kinds of uh, chairs, styling chairs, shampoo units out of all over the country. Um, so they can get us, you know, we have an 800 number and um, that's it. Wow, it's so exciting. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. And I uh, hope maybe I'll be back soon, but I hope that a lot of people are inspired and moved by this. And thank you again so much for your time. Okay, thank today? you for your time. Thank you. Well, guys, as you heard it from Michael and Michelle, Takara Belmont is a great company. I support them, great morals, great standards, and a definitely a high level of service. I want to thank you guys for watching so much. I'm Stephen, a salon guy, and I'll see you guys soon.